Hello friends, so welcome to Data Monday. So today we are going to talk about uh, conduct IT again. So I was going through the uh, all the sessions which I have planned in the beginning, and uh, it looks like uh, this was missing in the conduct IT series. So it's volume twelve. So I have uh, a series of eleven videos already with respect to conduct IT. So this video is going to be on resource management I'm so uh, most of the time uh, for uh, in, in some cases I mean uh, we can utilize the resource management in conduct IT to uh, solve our you know, practical problems. So what, first we are going to see what kind of problems uh, we could you know practically or uh, you know can uh, see and uh, try to solve it using the conduct IT resource management. So what uh, the, the scenarios could be, uh, let's say we have to process simultaneous execution of the uh, multiple pieces which is created upon a graph, right? And that piece, uh, that graph unloads the data or probably loads the data into the database, okay, uh, right? Or probably doing some, you know, uh, some process which is, you know, resource intensive. So what we could what we could do is you know, we can uh, we can control the simultaneous execution of the uh, that particular piece set. So let's say it's a resource intensive intensive in the sense of uh, it is using the multiple uh, joints, multiple uh, you know formulas or you know the sorting and uh, maybe you know partition by uh, partition by key and sort and all right. The components which requires a lot of memory, so that's where I uh, see it as a resource intensive, and that, and we need to control the simultaneous execution of the those p sets. Let's say we we have you know, some p sets and we want to run only five bits p sets at a time, and later on, whenever uh, whichever is you know finishes, let's say out of five, first is finishing, so the sixth is going to start. So at the end there will be only five. So these kind of scenarios uh, probably occur in our practical uh, use cases. And the second case would be whenever we want to read or write into the database, right? So sometimes uh, the target database uh, could be, uh, you know, um, could be slow or in, with respect to multiple reasons. Right? Maybe, uh, maybe multiple applications are you know, reading the data. So therefore, if in uh, if if our graphs are reading, you know, that particular DB or uh, loading the, that particular DB multiple times, let's say we are going to load 100 tables or 50 tables at a time, okay? So we could control that uh, that process to load only five at a time or only two at a time. And uh, we can limit the number of, you know, simultaneous read or write, okay? The third case would be the SFTP mechanism. So if it is the the, 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 the server, right, SFTP server is such a way that it is not, uh, you know, not uh, entertaining for multiple, multiple, uh, you know, multiple um, uh, incoming of the file or multiple, you know, pushing the file and, you know, uh, pulling the file. So that's when we, we have to create a graph which transfer the file and we could control the that uh, P set or graph execution, right? So these uh, different kind of scenario could occur, right? So they can occur in multiple ways in our in our uh, you know day to day working or maybe in a larger uh, you know um, scheme of uh, or uh, initial processing. So how we are going to do it? Okay. So what we can do is. Uh, uh, there is a resource management uh, supplied by Conduct IT when you when you create a new plan. So there will be a tool. Uh, it would be something that looks like let's have a picture. So when you create a new plan, so there will be a toolbox, right? So you will see the resources. In that resources, the first step what we can do is you can go and create the resource pool. So dot pool file you are going to create. So you can go ahead and create a new resource pool. Okay, resource, go to the resource, resource. Then there is a resource pool manager. When you click on it, you will have a window. There you will have toolbox, multiple tools, right? So there you can see, you know, create a new resource pool. 
open a new resource pool or you know create new resources okay so this kind of uh, you know, buttons you will see so in that you can create a one or you can create a resource group so within the resource group you can create a new resource pool dot pool file so i have created the db hit dot pool file okay what i am going to uh, take an example is my uh, my graph or you know is loading try to load the data into the database so i want to limit the number of uh, simultaneous load to the database so i i have created a dot pool file as a db hit dot pool so this is called a new resource pool i have created so okay after creating the new resource pool so within that pool you are going to create the resources okay create a new resource into the into the pool so there will be a, another button which will you know try uh, it will allow you to create a new resource in that so i have created a, so whenever you uh, click on the create new resource okay so whenever you create a new resource pool it will ask for you know uh, saving the pool name so db head dot pool name uh, saved it and then you need to create a new resource within that pool okay so i have created a new resource so whenever you create so it will ask for name so i have given the db hits as a name and it will ask for the number of you know size you need to give so there will be fixed size or dynamic size okay so let's say i have given the size as a 3 okay so whenever you give the size as a 3 i have to you know i little bit zoom it so you can see it better way so i have given the size as a 3 in the sense of this resource is limited to uh, number 3 i mean the all the units available is 3 so you cannot utilize more than 3 from this resource in the sense of if any particular graph or preset is utilizing one unit of it so the simultaneous execution is supported is only 3 okay so we will we are going to see that in later point in time so the first thing we are going to resource create a resource pool and then we are going to create a resource within that and then after doing this you would see you know into the your sandbox let's say your sandbox name is my project so within that my project you will see a resource as a directory already and you will have you know dot pool by db hit dot pool so if you open it you will see a you know a new resources in it okay so these are the uh, steps there you have created the resource pool and resources within that so if you look at the i have created the stack so what we have done is we created the resource pool for example the data pundit so you can give any names so i have given because i am interacting uh, within the graph to the database so i have given you know db is and all so you can create your own uh, you know the name which you want okay so within that uh, create the resource pool so i have created the, this db hits okay so make the size as 3 okay and uh, then create a plan so what so within the plan so now what we are going to do is we need to create a plan so go go to the toolbox create a new plan and then add multiple graph task okay for this you know graph task within that so i will create the plan like that and uh, i will add multiple you know graph task within the plan so that you know i can configure each graph task to uh, call the ai dot p set you know within different plan p set i'm going to call so let's say i have you know, added 10 uh, or let's say if it is a multiple of 3 let's say i have added 15 plan i'm going to add, you know load the 15 table so i have added 15 uh, graph task within that plan let's say okay and there are 15 p sets okay and they are loading different tables now. to the three tables let's say table 1 table 2 table 3 and table 15 okay so create a plan and multiple graph tasks within that okay now so after adding the you know graph tasks within that so you have already created different presets they are you know configured to add, uh, load the different tables to the database right then what you can do is for each graph task okay you go to the resource tab in the properties of the graph task you need to open each and every uh, graph task and you need to go to the resource tab of the that graph task okay so whenever you are so what you need to do is go to the graph task and you configure ai preset okay you can call that 
and in P set of graph from that graph class. In my case, A P set. And uh, let's say first P set name is uh, table name one underscore uh, underscore A B C dot P set. Let's say okay. Then go to the properties and the resources. Whenever you click on the resources, you will have this kind of table. Okay, the pool name, resource name, then unit units required. So these kind of tables you will see. Okay, whenever you should see this, and there are there will be two three buttons. Okay, uh, in the right hand side. And delete and edit. So the delete will be uh, disabled because there, if there is no you know resource uh, pool assigned or resource assigned, then the delete will be disabled. In the first time, add will be there. And delete and edit will be disabled. So whenever you try to uh, edit, so whichever you know you have to go to browse the pool and then you need to uh, select the resource and you need to specify the number of units you require for this piece set. Okay, so in this case, I am using one unit of it. Okay, so I have a total three units. Okay, so in, within this resource pool, okay, db hits dot pool, db hits dot pool, and so uh, total units are three for this pool. Okay, so I am utilizing one uh, one unit for this particular P set. Okay, likewise, I would configure each and every P set while specifying being one unit. Okay. So whenever you uh, assign it, then the delete and edit button would be you know enabled. So if you want to delete, you can delete again. If you want to edit it, and you want okay, you can edit it. So similarly, P set one I have configured. Similarly, you can will configure P set two, P set three, and P set n. And here is fifteen. So all the fifteen P sets we are going to configure like it. So whatever number you know you you try to you know, assign units one. So I am assigning one one unit for all the fifteen P sets, okay, or fifteen graph tasks, okay, which are calling inter calling the P sets. So I have configured my uh, all the graph tasks within the plan. Now I will uh, try to run this. So what is going to happen whenever? So whenever I have pressed, so this is the final steps, right? So I have um, followed all the steps, created the resource tool, you know, configured the resource to resource. Within the resource pool, then created the plan, add multiple graph tasks, configure the P set, you know, then go to the resource and specify the you know, resource pool name, resource name, and the units and all. Now the term is to execute the plan. So whenever I try to execute the plan, yeah, so how many plan, how many you know graph tasks going to be done? So in default case, whenever I don't have anything, you know, uh, resource at all, all the 15, uh, you know. Uh, the graph task is simultaneously going to execute. But in this case, because we have configured our resources, only three are going to be, you know, execute at time at at once. Okay. So let's say table one, table two, and table three are executing now. So all others would be waiting. Okay. So after after let's say table one is finished, or let's say table two is finished, and table one and table two are the three are running. So table two is finished because uh, one resource is free. Okay. So the mm, the uh, table four is going to be executed likewise. So at a time you can you know uh, run um, you know at three pieces in the sense of three database hits you can do at a time. Okay. So similarly you can do you know for the read of the database or for the execution of the p set which is using multiple uh, you know uh, the complex graph resource intensive graph that also you can limit and also if there is any graph or p set is you know accepting multiple files from your server so that also can be done so this resource manager rights this is going to be on uh, on your server so what you can do is i mean this can be this can be configured with multiple, you know, sandbox or multiple projects. So, okay. So, if the multiple projects are also utilizing this resource man uh, pool, right? So, okay. Let's say your different applications are running parallel in production. So, these resources can be communicated. You know, they are on the top of your operating systems. Okay. So, uh, so that also can be done. Okay. So, you can track it. Track Check the resources. Okay, so there will be a resource uh, resource 
server actually um, so that that uh, that will keep on tracking the utilization of the particular resource you can go and see the tracking so you will see the you know, how what resource is getting utilized at what percentage so if anything is free and or not you can go ahead and see in the tracking so okay so that is the thing which we may try to uh, discuss in probably in the following videos so for today uh, with that i am going to uh, wrap up the session so thank you so much uh, please subscribe my channel and we are going to discuss more on any issue and different uh, different uh, concept okay thank you so much